All right, so today we're going to fully have our discussion focused on multi-electron atoms. We started talking about these on Wednesday. And what we're going to start with is considering specifically uh, the wave functions for multi-electron atoms. Is there a different laser pointer, actually? I, if I could get one, this one doesn't seem to be working. Um, so the wave functions for multi-electron atoms. Then we'll move on to talking about the binding energies, and we'll specifically talk about how that differs from the binding energies we saw of hydrogen atoms. We talked about that quite in depth, but there are some differences now that we have more than one electron in the atom. Then uh, something that you probably have a lot of experience with is talking about electron configuration and writing out the electron configuration. But we'll go over that, particularly some exceptions when we're filling in electron configurations and how we would go about doing that for positive ions, which follow a little bit of a different procedure. And if we have time today, we'll start in on photoelectron spectroscopy. If not, that's where we'll start when we come back on Wednesday. So what we saw just on Wednesday in particular, but also as we have been discussing the Schrodinger equation for the hydrogen atom, is that this equation can be used to correctly predict the atomic structure of hydrogen and also all of the energy levels of the different orbitals in hydrogen, which matched up with what we observed, for example, when we looked at the hydrogen atom emission spectra. And what we can do is we can also use the Schrodinger equation to make these accurate predictions for any other atom that we want to talk about in the periodic table. The one problem that we run into is as we go to more and more uh, atoms in the table, oh, thanks, as we add on electrons, the Schrodinger equation is going to get more complicated. So here I've written for the hydrogen atom that deceptively simple form of the Schrodinger equation where we don't actually write out the Hamiltonian operator, but you remember that's a series of second derivatives, so we have a differential equation that we're actually dealing with. If you think about what happens when we go from hydrogen to helium, now, instead of one electron, so three position variables, we have to describe two electrons. So now we have six position variables that we need to plug into our Schrodinger equation. So similarly, as we now move up only one more atom in the table, so to an atomic number of three or lithium, now we're going from six variables all the way to nine variables. Thanks. So you can see that we're starting to have a very complicated equation, and it turns out that it's mathematically impossible to even solve the exact Schrodinger equation as we move up to higher numbers of electrons. So what we say here is we need to take a step back here and come up with an approximation that's going to allow us to think about using the Schrodinger equation when we're not just talking about hydrogen or one electron, but when we have these multi-electron atoms. The most straightforward way to do this is to make what's called a one-electron orbital approximation. And when you do, you get out what are called Hartree orbitals. And what this means is that instead of considering the wave function as a function, for example, for helium, as six different variables, what we do is we break it up and treat each electron as a separate wave function and say that our assumption is that the total wave function is equal to the product of the two individual wave functions. So for example, for helium, we can break it up into wave function for the r, theta, and phi value for electron one and multiply that by the wave function for the r, theta, and phi value for electron number two. So essentially what we're saying is we have a wave function for electron one and a wave function for electron two. We know how to write that in terms of the state numbers, so it would be one, zero, zero, because we're talking about the ground state. We're always talking about the ground state unless we spe specify that we're talking about an excited state. Uh, and we have the spin quantum number as plus one half for electron one and minus one half for the electron two. It's arbitrary which one I assign to which, but we know that we have to have each of those two magnetic spin quantum numbers in order to have the distinct four, uh, four letter description of an electron. We know that it's not enough just to describe the orbital by three quantum numbers. We need that fourth number to fully describe an electron. And when we describe this in terms of talking about chemistry terminology, we would call the first one the 1s, and 1 is in parentheses because we're talking about the first electron there, and we would multiply it by the wave function for the second one, which is also 1s, but now we, we're talking about that second electron. We can do the exact same thing when we talk about lithium, but now instead of breaking it up into two wave functions, we're breaking it up into three wave functions because we have three electrons. So the first, again, is the 1s1 electron. 
We then have the 1s2 electron. And what is our third electron going to be? Yeah, so it's going to be the 2s1 electron. So we can do this essentially for any atom we want. We just have more and more wave functions that we're breaking it up to as we get to more and more electrons.